Yemen's president has rejected a UN-proposed peace plan for the country. Exiled in Saudi Arabia, Abd Rabu Mansour Hadi was firm in his dismissal of the proposal, which would give the Shiite Houthi rebels who seized the capital in 2014 a share in the future government. The ideas presented, he said, carry the seeds of war and would be a reward for the rebels. It marks a fresh blow to UN efforts to end a conflict that, in just over a year and a half, has left 7,000 people dead, 3 million displaced and the country divided. On Saturday alone, at least 17 civilians were reportedly killed in the province of Taz in an airstrike by the Saudi-led coalition. Police were called to the corner of Main Street and West 4th for a man beating a woman shortly after 10 last night. When officers arrived, the man showed a sharp object and walked towards officers. Police say after refusing to drop the weapon, he was shot at least once. If taken to the hospital where he's in serious condition, keep you updated as more information becomes available. Civilian prisoners protected by the Fourth Geneva Convention. So this is yet another intentional war crime. It's as though the Saudi regime is a war crime regime. It has devolved into a war crime regime. Whether or not this is in retaliation uh, uh, for uh, actions on military targets becomes irrelevant when one is carrying out serial war crimes. And so one has to question here why that is occurring. It, it is true that the Saudis' longtime strategic allies, the United States and Israel, are both convicted war crime states. They have been convicted by the Kuala Lumpur War Crimes Tribunal for war crimes in Afghanistan, Iraq, and Palestine. Now, uh, uh, it should be noted as well that the Saudi regime systematically has, has carried out crimes against humanity, against, uh, against uh, religious worshipers who come to the annual Hajj. So this is a war crimes regime that demands and, and immediate prosecution. And the question is, why are they not being prosecuted and what messages of protection are they receiving by the Western community? And Mr. Weber, my next question to you is going to address that exact question, sir. I mean, what's the legality behind the complicity of the U.K. and the U.S. when the U.S. sits there right off the coast of Yemen? It's uh, selling them, you know, tons of arms, both the U.K. and the U.S. The U.S. is helping them with logistics, intelligence, and these bombings, which, and, and it's no secret. There have been schools, hospitals, U.N. shelters, homes, weddings, funerals. The list goes on. Gas stations, you did utilities, plants, large, a huge disproportionate number of civilians. It's no secret to the world. What's the legality, legality on the West's complicity here? Yes, well, I would argue that under Nuremberg principles that the Western powers who are engaging in facilitating this war crime state in its explicit serial pattern of war crimes should be co-defended in the prosecution of the Saudi state. And it is amazing that uh, that the United States and the UK have made themselves this vulnerable to a prosecution which will inevitably come in the future. Yet we see these, uh, I mean, uh, African leaders that we heard, haven't heard their name for 20 years being dragged before the ICC for some war crime that took place in some remote village 50 years ago. Thank you, Mr. Alfred Lambermont Weber, a war crimes attorney, joining us here on the program out of Vancouver. <laughs> Thank 
start in Syria where rebels say they've gained control over a suburb in western Aleppo during an assault to break the government's siege of the city. Islamist rebel group Fatah al-Sham said they'd captured Dahiyat al-Assad, which is a residential district of about a square kilometre. Another rebel group said the insurgents had occupied the residential area rather than the whole suburb. However, the claims of control are unconfirmed as a Syrian military source earlier said the army and its allies had thwarted rebel attacks on south and west Aleppo. State television reported that the army had destroyed four car bombs. A 6.6 magnitude tremor has struck near Norcia in central Italy, the same area hit by a major earthquake in August, which killed some 300 people. Historical buildings have crumbled to the ground and many people have been rescued from the rubble. Italian authorities say so far there are no reports of fatalities. Diptico Laurent has the latest. Locals from this village gather in the main square as priests prayed. Nearby, the facade is all that's left of the main church. Around 7.40 on Sunday morning, an earthquake with a magnitude of 6.6 struck central Italy. Buildings and homes were reduced to rubble including a 14th-century cathedral that was also destroyed. The monastery of San Benedito de Norcia is no longer standing. The saint looks over us, but the basilica has been destroyed. My fellow priests are fine. Some of them are praying outside the city. Some of us are here to perform the last rites on the dying. The earthquake's epicenter was here near the ancient village of Norcia, about 70 kilometers southeast of Perugia. Tremors were felt as far as in Rome. I see the faces of people who've lost hope. This scene in the St. Benedito Square is like a war zone, not an earthquake. We've lost our whole national heritage. In August, a deadly earthquake killing 300 people struck Amatrice, about 50 kilometers from Norcia. Last Wednesday, two powerful quakes, believed to be aftershocks from the Amatrice earthquake, struck central Italy, prompting authorities to evacuate residents in Norcia and its surroundings. The Iraqi Joint Operations Command has denied reports that security forces halted their advance towards the city of Mosul. Brigadier General Yahya Rasul said there was no suspension of military operations to retake the ISIL stronghold in Iraq. He said the military was reorganizing and redeploying units after having freed dozens of villages and towns. The counterterrorism forces are waiting for other troops north and south of the city who are still fighting to advance to their positions. Earlier in the day, the Pentagon said Iraqi forces suspended their advance toward Mosul to clear ISIL supporters and booby traps. Russia is sending more warships to Syria for operations against extremist groups. The naval destroyer Smit Livy has departed from the Crimean port of Svastopol. The heavily armed ship is heading for the Greek port of Preus before it joins its battle group in Syria. The vessel took part in previous operations in Syria back in 2013 and 2015. Meanwhile, a Russian naval fleet is also on its way to the Mediterranean Sea. The fleet includes Russia's only aircraft carrier a Kuznetsov a cruiser and a several destroyers.
السلام عليكم خلاص نزل نحكي لي حكي انا حكيت نزل نزل 